Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm coming at you with another paid request, and we are continuing on with the Angel franchise of reviews. Not the TV series, <laughs> um, not the Buffy spinoff, but the, um, the 80s and 90s exploitation films where a young lady is a certain thing. In the first movie, she was a high school honor student um, by day. And in this movie, the sequel, the first sequel, she is a uh, law student by day and a undercover hooker by night to find out what's going on. Um, but we're going to be talking about the first sequel today, which is Avenging Angel, which honestly, I kind of like this one more than the first. This was more of an action film. It uh, toned the kind of the content down a little bit and added a bunch of shootouts and action scenes and added some humor in there. And I actually thought that this was a pretty solid sequel. And I got to say, you know, I, I think I kind of like this one a little bit more than the first movie. The only thing that I wish is... I wish they were able to come to terms with bringing Donna Wilkes back because they wanted her to come back, but she wanted more money because the first movie was successful and they said no, so they just simply recast it. That's the only thing that I wish that they were able to figure out. I like Teresa Russell in the film, but it would have been nice if Donna Wilkes came back because she was the one that created the character. But other than that, I do think this is a solid sequel, you know, and it was a lot of fun. I was very surprised by this. And like I said, I think I kind of like this one a little bit more than the first movie, but that's just me. But anyway, before we jump, jive, and wail into this, in the words of Ryan Setzer, um, if anyone else would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request such as this, you may do so. Down below in the description box, there is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just, <clears throat> excuse me, it does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, a cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rants, streams, commentaries, and anything in between. But that's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if any of you are interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you uh, that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the, excuse me, the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. And I forgot to mention, the person that sent this request in is the movie reviewer next door, aka, uh, as he was formerly known as, Otaku Gaming HD. Sorry. But Avenging Angel. Um, so this came out pretty much exactly a year after the first, which is always very risky. Because you never know if it's going to work or it's not going to work. In this case, it didn't really work because it didn't make, I think, nearly as much as the first movie. And I also think that the fact that Donna Wilkes didn't come back probably deterred a lot of people from wanting to see this movie. To be perfectly honest, again, to be completely honest, I think that because she wasn't in it, people were kind of like, eh, I'll wait for the video. Um, that could be a factor as well. Now, sometimes when movies come out exactly one year later, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Back to the Future 2 and 3, that worked. Ninja Turtles 1 and 2, that worked. Even though, again, Back to the Future 3 and Ninja Turtles 2 didn't make as much as the second or the previous movies, but they still made a nice chunk of change at the box office. Um, Elm Street 4 and 5, or no, yeah, Elm Street 5 came out then, yeah, because Elm Street 4 came out in 88, yeah, Elm Street 4 and 5, eh, 
they made money, but I think a lot of people were really turned off by 5. I actually quite like Elm Street 5. That's just me. Halloween 4 and 5, it didn't really work. Um, I mean, Halloween 5 made money, but it didn't make as much as 4, and people were really pissed off at the ending of Halloween 5. Um, but they did rectify it, so there you go. So sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And I think in this case, box office-wise, it didn't. And also, maybe the fact that they lightened the movie up, because I was actually quite surprised by that. This one kind of went in a different direction, but I actually liked that direction. You know, it's more of a, it's more of an 80s action film than anything else. So I was like, oh, I can get behind this. This is pretty cool. So maybe that turned people off as well. But I think over the years, people kind of went back to it and looked at it from a different perspective and were like, oh, like, okay, no, 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 this actually works. Like, this is cool. It's just a little bit different. And that's how I feel. And like I said, I don't know. I kind of like this one more. Um, this was like something that Canon Films would have made. And it, it was New World. So... You know, it's definitely in that ballpark, but imagine if Canon Films had made a movie like this. You know, that would have been pretty awesome. So the plot of the film... Now, what's weird is it takes place five years after the first movie, even though it came out a year later. But it's five years after the first movie. Molly, a.k.a. Angel, is now played by Teresa Russell. At the time... Teresa Russell was in private school. That was the big movie that she was in. And then she did other stuff, but it wasn't until many years later when she was in the Saw movies that really bumped her career up. Like, I think she's in pretty much all the sequels to Saw. I've only seen the second and the third. I think she's in the third. I don't remember you know, but those movies aren't my cup of tea, to be honest. They never were, and I have not gone back to explore them because it's just not for me. That's just how I feel. But anyway, uh, Angel is no longer a hooker. Uh, the cop from the first movie, who does come back, but he is played by a different actor. He is actually played by Robert Lyons. Robert Lyons worked with Charles Bronson a lot, and he's been in a, a lot of stuff over the years. You have definitely seen him before. He has become her legal guardian, and she is going to law school to be a lawyer, which is cool. So he gets on a call one night. He shows up. A, a partner of his was working undercover to expose these uh, this crime syndicate that is forcing people and murdering people to start buying up all the land in L.A. in Hollywood Boulevard so they could use it for their purposes. She has a list of the names of people and who were involved. So these hitmen show up, they wipe her out and he, Lieutenant Andrews gets there just in time, but he gets killed. So Angel finds out. So she goes back into her kind of her old ways, not really, but she goes back under the guise of being a hooker to go and try and find out what happened because there was a one witness of the crime this guy named Johnny Angel, who dresses up like an angel, and she goes back and has the, the, a lot of the same characters come back, which was nice. Um, the lady that played her landlord, she now has a baby. I think the baby was actually the director's daughter, <laughs> which is cool. So they just used the little baby in there, which was nice. And um, Yo-Yo, the guy that played Yo-Yo comes back, and then the guy that played the cowboy, Kit, he is in an insane asylum because people think he's crazy. So they go and break him out. That is actually a really fun scene. And they all start to work together to find Johnny Angel, to find these guys and, you know, serve justice. Hence the title Avenging Angel. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the rest of the movie is them trying to get these guys. There's a bunch of shootouts and fight scenes. The ending of the movie takes place at the Bradbury Building, which, speaking of Robert Lyons, was used in the ending of Murphy's Law. He played Charles Bronson's partner in Murphy's Law. So, there's a lot of fun in this movie. There is a lot of fun to be had. And, you know, I like it. 
like I said, the first movie, it was pretty heavy on the subject matter, and I know, like, in that review, I said it wasn't as uh, intense as one would think, and it's not. I mean, you watch the film, it's not, like, fucking euphoria or anything like that, thank God, but, you know, it is a, for 1984, it was pretty serious subject matter, but I think they handled it in a nice way. You know, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's become, you know, a cult classic, you know, 37 years later. You know, I, I, 30, 35, 30, 38, sorry, 38, I was a year off. 38 years later, you know, it's still a cult classic. People still love this movie. Um, but this movie, it, it lightened it up. Um, you know, it doesn't really jump as deep into that subject matter. It does a little bit because there's a subplot where there's this 13-year-old girl that's doing the same thing that Angel was doing and she helps her get out. So it does dip its toe back into that water, so to speak. But not as direct and not as much as the first movie. So there you go. But this one was more, you know, like, okay, we already did that. Let's kind of go back in there, but let's have some fun. And let's blow some shit up and have, you know, shootouts and all this crazy shit going on. And that is what they did. You know, it's a lot of fun. Now, it's not, because this came out in 1985, it's not Commando. It's not Rambo First Blood Part Two. It's not a Chuck Norris movie. But, you know, they definitely worked with what they had to work with. So, you know, they were like, all right, let's have, let's have some fun. And there's, you know, practical blood squibs and there's people jumping out of buildings and getting shot and people getting the shit kicked out of them. And it was a lot of fun. And then the, the fact, cause again, I'd never seen these movies before, but when they drove up to the Bradbury building, I'm like, Oh, they're going to go in the Bradbury building. It's going to be like Blade Runner. And it was, I was like, Oh, this is cool. <laughs> so I love that building. I love how they every movie in LA uses it as as kind of the final showdown piece. I don't know if they still use it today in movies. I don't know if it's like a historical site and they're not allowed to use it or whatever, but back in the day, back in the 80s they used it a lot, so that makes me very happy. Um but it was cool. And I, and again, a lot of the same characters come back uh, the guy that played the cowboy is even more fun in this movie, and he gets more to do. So, you know, it would have been cool if he got his own spinoff. But that guy, um, he was kind of at the end of the road at this time, because like I said, he was in Hell Comes to Frogtown. There was another, like, 80s cult movie that he was in, but I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. But it would have been cool if he got, you know, like a spinoff where he was just like a vigilante going around L.A. shooting people. You know, he could have teamed up with Bronson or something. Like, that would have been cool. But it never happened. Um, but Teresa Russell, like I said, she does fine as the new angel. Like I said, I do wish that they brought Donna Wilkes back because she created the character. Um, you know, and it would, it would have been cool to see her in this movie, you know, a little bit more mature and, and out of that life, but now she's running around shooting and killing bad guys. I mean, that would have been really fun to see. But they just couldn't agree on the price. It happens all the time. You know, the first movie does well. I kind of like, I kind of want to get a little bit more money. It wasn't, I'm, I'm sure she wasn't demanding. I'm, I'm sure she wasn't like, I want $20 million. And duh, 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 duh. No, she was probably like, can we get a little bump? Maybe. And it just, it didn't happen. Uh, but Teresa Russell, again, does fine. Everybody else does fine. All the returning people, it was nice to see them back in those characters. Robert Lyons, I wish he was in the movie a little bit more because I do like him as an actor. But I get the context of his character in the story, so I get why he got killed off so early. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anybody else that I missed in the film? The guy that played Johnny Angel, the witness, his character was fine, but like he killed the bad one of the bad guys, and then he like accidentally killed himself. I thought that was kind of odd. Like, why couldn't like him and the bad guy just shoot each other, and then that would have been it, and he could have like sacrificed himself. I mean, I guess in a way he kind of did, but 
in an odd way, so to speak. But whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, all the action was practical. It was all done for real. I mean, this is 1985. We're talking about here. This was, again, the same year of movies such as Commando and Rambo First Blood Part Two, and that great Chuck Norris uh, triple feature of Missing in Action to the beginning, Code of Silence and Invasion USA, um, which Invasion USA is technically a Christmas movie, just saying. But at the end of the day, this was a lot of fun. I was really surprised by this. Again, I've that none of these movies, I've never seen a trailer. I've never, I don't know really anything about them, but so far, so good. Uh, so far, these have been a lot of fun and I look forward to part three and part four next. I'm sure they won't be as good as the first two, but because that's typically how it goes, but I'm sure we'll get some enjoyment out of them and we'll, we'll cover all that shortly here. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Avenging Angel. Next up, we will be talking about Angel 3, the final chapter. As we all know, it's not the final chapter. It's never the final chapter because they made another one after it. So there you have it. But until then, folks, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we'll talk to you later. See you.